Hi everyone. In previous session, we discussed about uh, how to configure the Tomcat in AWS EC2 instance. And today we will discuss about how to deploy the war file into your Tomcat server. So for that, you need to check whether the Tomcat is running or not in the Linux instance. Let me check. So I started Tomcat server. So let me open my manager app. So from manager app only, we have to deploy the war file into Tomcat server. So let me find out war file. Uh, there are some deploy directory or war file located on the server. So where it, the server is available. So that means in your EC2 instance, if any war file is there, you can use that war file to deploy here. Or if you want to upload from your laptop or desktop, you can use browse option. There are two ways to deploy the war file. and this is the TLS host name if this is optional not required now. So let me check if any files available in the Tomcat server or not. Get into the Apache Tomcat. Get into the web apps. Check any files are available or not. So there is no war file in the web apps. So we need to download the war file. or you can upload it from the your laptop or desktop. So I'm going to first initially I will upload from my laptop so then we can understand how we are going to edit plan and later on we'll use the war file located on the server. So browse, select the file where it is available as a make sure that it is not a jar file or a file only the war file you have to select then only it is going to allow so this is my war file so see sample web app that war so you can try to deploy just click on the deploy so as it is it will show you in the see sample web app so it is specified. If you want to click, you can click using this web application. It is redirected into the sample web application to deploy and test. So this is the URL which is formed by the Tomcat. So if you click this, it will invoke a Snoop servlet. This is one server side code. It will fetch from the server. So we can click. See, this is the code which is available from the backend. So it is retrieved now. So if you want to deploy the war file from your local computer, you can use this option. If you want to deploy from the server, you can use another one. So we can do that. Someone is asking question about, uh, can we create the multiple instances in the same Linux server? So you, in one Linux environment, you are going to download and install only one line Apache Tomcat. We can't create the multiple instances in the one Linux server. So make sure that. So if you are going to install uh, another Tomcat, you have to use another Linux environment or another EC2 instance, then only it is going to allow that it's not for the best practices. Now we did the deployment and sample web application. What is the URL which you have configured? This is my URL IPv4 public IP address of your EC2 instance, then 8080 port. So by default, it will uh, configure only the 8080 port. So if you want to change that, we can see that later in later point of time. 
we'll check. Suppose if you want to do, this is the var file which we have uploaded right now. So it is right now it is in the start state. So if you want to stop that, you can use the stop. Now the start button is enabled. Before start button is not enabled and the stop is enabled. Now it is disabled and start is enabled. Now you can click this. It is going to throw an error. See, status not code error for not for that means file not found. So once you start, then only it is going to allow the select. See, this is how we want to deploy and test your war file into the Tomcat server. Then I am going to deploy another way. It is like a context war file deploy direct war file from the different context for context for in the sense so this is the path where we have configured that is the default file name while deploying it is taken but in case of i don't want that file i want different file so for that what you have to do you can take this context path there you can use your own name. Then the war file directly or path in your EC2 instance where that war file is located. XML configuration file path is not required. So you need to use the war file name along with the absolute path. Then deploy that. I'm going to take one file. where it is available. So I'm getting into web apps application. You can check whether it is application is available or not. And you can easily understand. Because it is disconnected forcefully. Let me connect it. Put it directly. Ready? Like that? Hello? Sample web application that war file is there. In web applications, you can keep all your jar files and you can take from there. So by, by default, this is the folder where you can deploy all your war files. So I want some other file or you can check it later. So if the war file, I'm going to copy this war file to some other CP. So now this is the war file and I'm going to deploy that war file. What you want to do here? You need to stop or undeploy this. So it will remove from here also. So right now it is available. We will try to undeploy this. You can stop first. Then we can undeploy. It will remove from here and we'll check here whether it is removed or not. See, there is no application. This is how you want to do your deployments in the Tomcat server. I'm going to use this deploy. So I deploy and I'm going to take the copy of this var file. CP. Here for temp reading permission they need. And that what you have to do, you can use sudo su root user, you need to log in. Is this Apache? Yeah. 
now from here we need to copy as a normal user you are not able to copy the contents with root access you have to copy from root user i'm going to copy this into some other directory over right Now I can go to temp directory. I can see it is available or not. See sample web app dot var. So I need to copy this complete directory, print version directory. Sample web app dot var. I'm going to copy this directory where it is available. So now I will show you how to deploy the war file located on the server. So this is my context path. I can say slash web app. For example, I'm giving the context path. And you can use this path for deployment. I'll give the name of that file. Sample web app that var deployment page. So this is how you want to deploy. You can check whether it is working or not. Web app sample. This is also the same output. I'm going to stop this one. I'm going to use. Let me check whether it is running or not. Click on the server. No serverless. It takes some time from the retrieving the server side. So, I'm just simply click. So, this is how we want to deploy from the context point. You see there are multiple options available start stop reload and deploy so here uh, what it will do start it will start the application it is going to retrieve the data from the backend database if you want to stop it will go through the 404 exception you see web sample just click work 404 not click service is not available anymore so like this you want to do and one more thing it is that reload is there what is that reload why you have to use this reload option so when you are changing any front end code like ui and html js dcs you are not required to reload if you are doing any major changes from back inside that you have to reload with your changes that means it is not going to it will take the latest changes and it will reload the changes so if you clear if you completely remove or undeploy you can use undeploy option as just now i have shown in the example this is how you want to manage your uh, deployments into the Tomcat server. Suppose if you want to change the port number, you can use the any port in the configuration file, which is Maybe conf directory 
get back into the field opt then maybe tom can get create this pretty conf you see get server dot Server.xml file by default it will open in the VA editor. Using the VA editor, we can open the term server.xml file. Sorry, guys, it is forcefully closing uh, with me. Server.xml, so you can find using the CMF. So it will set the numbers. ASC. Better not found. Sorry. Okay. You can find out using the server port. set numbers using as a CMF so it will display you can find out the port using a slash port so it should be two ports available server okay Connector port in there so, and find out using the connector. Let's see double line. The connector port is 800 by default. We have to change the double line double zero. I'm changing the port double line double zero. I'm going to save it. Check. File it is available and we will change that or not. Server port is double line double zero. Now we have to stop the Tomcat server. Stop Tomcat. So it is going to stop the Tomcat server. I can click it. It's going to throw an error. still problem loading the page so for that you have to start the tomcat again now it is started you can go and find out double nine double zero it's going to start you can click on the manager app try to log in with We are going to log in with that uh, change it port number. This is how we want to change the port number. <laughs> the next session we will discuss about the what is this server status and host manager server status and host manager or uh, this session only we'll discuss if we have enough time so we'll check what is this uh, server status 
be showing the server status. Suppose if you want to remove the configuration, and to get into the virtual directory again, 